Hello, everyone. Welcome to our channel. The Rolex Datejust 41mm Wimbledon is a stunning timepiece that blends the classic design of the Datejust collection with the iconic green and purple color scheme of the Wimbledon tennis tournament. The watch features a 41mm oyster steel case with a fluted bezel, giving it a refined and elegant look. The case is topped with a scratch resistant sapphire crystal, which provides excellent protection for the watch's dial. The dial of the Datejust 41mm Wimbledon is the highlight of the watch, featuring a unique combination of green and purple colors. The center of the dial is green with a sunray finish, while the outer ring is purple with a radial finish. The hour markers are made of 18 knots white gold and filled with Rolex's signature chromolite luminescent material, which emits a blue glow in low light conditions. The date window is located at the 3 o'clock position and features a magnifying lens for improved visibility. The watch is powered by Rolex's self-winding caliber 3235 movement, which offers excellent accuracy and reliability. The movement has a power reserve of approximately 70 hours and is equipped with Rolex's patented Chronergy escapement, which enhances the watch's efficiency and precision. The Datejust 41mm Wimbledon is fitted with a three-link oyster bracelet made of oyster steel, which provides a comfortable and secure fit. The bracelet is equipped with Rolex's patented EasyLink extension system, allowing the wearer to adjust the bracelet length by up to 5mm without the use of tools. Overall, the Rolex Datejust 41mm Wimbledon is a superb timepiece that combines classic design with a unique and eye-catching color scheme. It is a watch that will appeal to both tennis fans and watch enthusiasts alike. Today, we bring you a review of the Rolex Datejust Wimbledon and a comparison between the real and fake versions. We also want to discuss with you how to identify the authenticity of a watch and what are the key factors to look for. Many of us may not have a professional understanding of watches. When we see a beautiful watch, our first impression may be impressive. However, if you want to know the quality of the watch, you need to carefully inspect the various details of the watch. There are many watch sellers, including those who are honest, but you are more likely to encounter scammers. They may show you a high-quality watch, but they may send you a low-quality product with a similar appearance. These sellers usually offer a much lower price, and some buyers may think they have hit the jackpot, but in fact, they have fallen into a trap. Therefore, if you plan to buy a watch, it is necessary to have some basic knowledge of watch identification. Now, let's talk about the Wimbledon watch. The official price of this watch is about $12,000, and the market price does not fluctuate much from the official price. If you feel that the circulation price of watches like Submariner, GMT Master, and Daytona is much higher than the official Rolex price, then buying a Datejust is the right choice. The basic transaction price of Rolex Datejust does not fluctuate much from the official price, even for some popular styles, such as the mint green dial, blue dial, etc. If you don't consider investment, then choose Datejust. In addition, Rolex Datejust is a classic style, and it is easy to sell in the market if you want to sell it. However, it should be noted that watches like the Rolex Oyster Perpetual may experience slightly more significant discounts. If you buy a Datejust, especially a classic style like the Wimbledon or the Blue Dial, including Tiffany Blue, which are popular styles, you can still quickly sell it and get a good price. Okay, let's continue today's evaluation of authenticity comparison. The one on the left is a genuine Rolex, and the one on the right is a clean version. Let's see if there are any differences between them. Why do we compare two watches side by side? Many people think that the color of this dial is not correct, and that there are significant differences in the hands, case, and bracelet. We have always emphasized a principle. We evaluate whether the watch is okay from the perspective of craftsmanship and technical level, not from a subjective perspective such as personal feelings about color tones, or differences caused by angles, cameras, or different lighting conditions that affect the human visual system. We cannot use these as criteria for identification. So, if you look at it from this angle, these two dials have almost no color tone. Can you say that these two dials are exactly the same and both genuine? Absolutely not. You can only say that the color tones of these two dials are made particularly authentic. If you look at them from another angle, you may find that they are not completely identical. From this angle, the gray is relatively darker. 
Now let's take a look at this clean one. Its color tone looks a bit lighter. If we look at it with our naked eyes, the color tone of the genuine dial will appear slightly darker, while the clean version will appear slightly lighter. They both have black and gray elements, and radial lines inside, but the difference lies in the depth and brightness of the color tone. The clean one will be slightly duller and less bright. Therefore, color tone cannot be used as a criterion for identification. At most, it is used to assess the degree of similarity between them. However, if the differences between them are significant, then there is no need to identify them. You can tell at a glance if it's fake, right? Now, let's take a closer look at the dial of the genuine one and explain how to identify a Rolex dial. We can see what is on the Rolex dial, nothing but the hour markers, and a crown. So, let's look at the hour markers and the lettering on them. I have already researched this before making this video. Now let's use a macro lens to explain it to everyone. If we look at these watches from this angle, for example, let's magnify them by 1.5 times. You can see that the brushing and the fillings of the hour markers, including the hour markers themselves, are very detailed, which is an excellent feature of a genuine one. Now let's take a look at this clean version. In a 1.5x magnification, the brushing, the sunburst pattern, and the three-dimensional sense of the hour markers are very similar to the original ones, right? Let's take a closer look at the small crown at the 12 o'clock position and all the details of the crown. They are actually very well made, including the hands. Look at this clean hand. It has no rough edges or burrs, right? And it still has a little bit of a three-dimensional feel to it. Now, look at the genuine one. The whole second hand is very round and smooth, and the three-dimensional effect is very clear, right? Overall, there are not many problems with the entire watch in various aspects. If it is 1.6 times the situation, then this 1.6 times is definitely not enough for us to authenticate which one is real and which one is fake. We need to magnify the image at least 15 times for authentication, because we are evaluating the craftsmanship which is not a subjective perspective of what we can see. The craftsmanship must be magnified to have an intuitive comparison. If a replica watch has enough precision, it will be okay at 5 times magnification and 10 times magnification, but it may not be clear enough at 15 times magnification. This is a standard. Now, let's directly talk about how to authenticate the color of the dial under a microscope. The first thing that catches your eye through the microscope is a genuine watch dial. You can see that the brushed lines on the genuine dial are very delicate, and the most critical thing is what? Each brushed line is very straight and continuous, right? Everything is very clear. Now, let's take a look at this clean one. What do the brushed lines look like? If you observe carefully, you will find that the radiating lines on the replica watch dial are a little rougher and the brushed lines are relatively thicker and not as straight. You can basically see that these sunray patterns are intermittent, but the overall dial still has a brushed texture. This is a very important difference between the clean and genuine dials. Why do the dials look different in terms of texture? It is because the brushed lines on the dial cannot be so delicate, continuous, and straight. This is related to the precision of the production process and machine. Continuing, let's take a look at the entire dial scale. This scale is a 3D embossed pattern, and when we look at it, we initially feel that the Roman numeral markers are green. However, when we examine it under a magnifying glass, we discover that the center is actually black. This surprised me, and it shows that only by magnifying the scale can we observe more details. People often ask, can the best replica watches fool appraisal experts? The answer is obviously no. Although the difference may not be noticeable to the naked eye, inconsistencies can be seen with magnification equipment. We can see that the number 5 and the following number 1 have slightly rough edges on their green borders. We will also show a static image to demonstrate this to everyone. From a different angle, it can be seen that the clean processing is not particularly clean and the craftsmanship of the genuine product generally does not exhibit this situation. We will show you a genuine product, which is much cleaner and smoother. Regarding the luminescent scale, if you have the time, you can test it yourself. 
The genuine product's luminescence must last longer than cleans, but it is still a particle like filling, right? From this angle, the brushing is really beautiful. The genuine product's brushing is a bit like the magnetic field lines drawn in our physics books, right? The scale edges are also very clean. Moving on to the clean scale, the overall workmanship is actually quite good. It has been polished and has a particle like texture. From this angle, the brushing effect is also quite good. The crown inside is also well crafted, and according to the appraisal criteria, the craftsmanship of the small crown on the clean watch is very good, and the entire watch has been polished. The only difference is that the two corners of the small crown are slightly sharper. Let's continue looking at the hour, minute, and second hands. As for the axis of the hands, let's first look at the position of the central axis. In fact, the way the central axis is treated is not unique, and it's not entirely consistent even among authentic products. The central axis of the two watches is different, and we will take photos later to compare. The hands of the authentic watch undoubtedly have a strong three-dimensional effect, are very smooth, and have no burrs or edges. When viewed at various angles, they are polished perfectly without any problem, and even after magnification, no burrs can be seen. Now let's take a look at the clean one. The clean one is still okay. In my personal opinion, at this angle, it still doesn't show any significant flaws. The edges of the hour hand are a bit sharp, and the three-dimensional effect is still okay. As for clarity, including the middle hand, there is a central ridge, and the sides are slightly concave. This state is also okay, but there are some burrs and edges on the minute hand near the central axis, which is unavoidable due to differences in craftsmanship or cost. As for the sapphire mirror, let's explain it with a picture. The sapphire mirror can be judged from two aspects. On the one hand, the side of the mirror is frosted, and the glass mirror needs to be chamfered. Clean uses the technique of pulling sand, but it doesn't do chamfering. The identification of the sapphire mirror is relatively easy. You can see the chamfering on the authentic watch, which is very obvious. Therefore, to determine the authenticity of a watch, it mainly depends on your knowledge of the identifying points and differences in craftsmanship. However, it's absurd for every watch enthusiast to pay for professional training in watch identification before buying a watch. In general, for non-professional watch enthusiasts, to identify a watch, you need to carefully observe the smallest details of the watch. Such as whether the sapphire mirror is completely flat, whether there are burrs on the glass edge, whether the cyclops is clear enough, the quality of the oil-printed calendar font, the clarity and smoothness of the characters inside the case, whether the scale on the dial has been polished, whether the edges of the hands have burrs, etc. Without systematic training, it's often easy to miss or misjudge. Professional watch identification institutions have professionals who have summarized a very stable, systematic, and complete set of identification standards through countless cases, and will not make unnecessary mistakes. As a watch enthusiast, we may not need to learn how to systematically identify a watch. Follow our channel, and you will have a clearer understanding of watches. That's all for today's review. Thank you, and see you next time.